Alrighty. Good morning. It's it's one of those days. Uh, good morning. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This is they possibly not going to have a proper intro because I had to reboot the entire switcher, and unfortunately, the last time I saved a backup, um, I didn't save everything. Well, it's it's kind of a long story of how this whole thing works, but um, I don't know if I'm going to have music for an intro or what. Or I might like start playing music randomly. I might have loaded music into the wrong slot. Let's find out. Let's see what happens if I do this. That definitely didn't work. So let's see if my lower third pops up. Give that its timer. I'm sorry, we'll try not to scrunch on the microphone there. And it's... Ah. <laughs> that means I put it in the wrong place. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, I put that in the wrong place. How do I get rid of that? I don't even know how I get rid of that. Uh-oh. There's like no... Hmm. Well, it must be... Oh, because it's playing that one. Okay, let's do this. So what happens is, you know, I've got this massive scripting, um, this whole thing set up, and I don't remember where the audio file belongs. So it clearly it doesn't belong there. Maybe this is working. I'm not even sure what the heck this is loading right now, but maybe this is going to work, and we'll have our... our audio file back momentarily. We're, we're going to try it again in a, in a moment here uh, and probably hopefully do a proper opening. But in the meantime, we'll just have our customary pre-show chit chat and see what happens. So, uh, you know, yesterday when I we had the sound sync, the reason I went live from the Mo, uh, Mevo is because I had this sound sync issue. We've talked about that before. And I showed you that I had re-synced my, my little Blackmagic device and that fixed it, but then sometimes it doesn't and so on. I finally figured out this morning the problem <laughs> was Wirecast. I should have known. So I deleted the shot. For anybody who uses Wirecast out there, I deleted the shot and just re-added it, and suddenly everything was in sync. So now we know where the problem is lying, so now we know how to fix it in the future. We thought the problem was with the box turned out not to be. Go figure. So there's that. Um, okay. Ooh, a transparent. Yes, I think that actually worked. I think we might actually be set. Wow. That'd be awesome. So uh, today we got the resyncing fi fixed, and then I loaded up my switcher, and this page, the screen was completely blank. None of the graphics were there. There, that was just, which is crazy weird. That's not supposed to happen. So I don't even know how or why. But anyway, we're there now. We just had to do a reboot and then a restore of the project file, and the project file has older graphics in it. And anyway, but we're there. So uh, let's let's get this crap out of my way. Let's take a look at the chat room, and let's just see what's happening here before we get started on the real thing. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning to SRO Digital. You're here first. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, Gachita, The O Show. Uh, some good good friendly faces here. Tom Cam, I see you've got a big question on there, which I've already glanced at, and I don't know the answer to that. So um, uh, you can post that in a comment later, and I will have to research that one, because I just don't know. Uh, Burns Tech, hey, hey, hey. And Achita's again, and Matt, uh, and R. R. John. Hello all to you, Tom. So everybody's here. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, oh, and Sean Mark Nipper, good morning. Oh, and you're down in LA. Super. John, did, uh, Sean, did you get your live blogging audio issue sorted out? Let me know. John says, yesterday was surreal. I was watching while stuck in traffic on the M25, driving while watching slash listening to me driving. Yeah, see, at least one of us was moving, right? That's cool. <laughs> I remember traffic on the M25. That nasty, nasty stuff. And hello to Kansas City. And uh, Sean Sully is saying, Sean, let us know when the Panasonic announcement happens. Yeah, do that. Okay, I'm going to try and do a proper opening. We'll see if it works. Fingers crossed. And yeah, fingers crossed. That's all I can say. It worked. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on YouTube, on photo, on YouTube, every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, or in the case of today, 9.41, because we got a little bit late start. Uh, yeah. Yesterday's show was super fun. Thanks for tuning in for that. It was a little crazy driving around. Monday's show is the WWDC keynote, and I just created the event, and I think you'll like the... Um, I think you'll like the graphic that I created for that. It was kind of fun. I am really looking forward to it. I don't know if what I'm going to do is really legit. I might get shut down, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to see what happens. Living dangerously. That's how you live dangerously when you're a computer photo geek. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Welcome. So today we're talking about this stuff here. 
So allow me to provide a wee bit of background first. Um, I should pull up the the um, web page on this so you can see what just what it is we're looking at here. And, oops, you hush. Um, which is on uh, Ryan? Did you add the link to the thing? Excellent. So uh, this is a photo vest, a photography vest, and it's um, the company reached out to me and said, "Hey," and this is like a it's a Chinese company, and so it was a really interesting email, <laughs> very interesting email. I uh, said, "Hey, would you like to review any of our products?" And they sent me links to three different products: the photo vest and two different on-camera LED lights. And I said, "Sure, I'll review them all. You know, why not?" And they came back and said, well, which one? And I said, oh, OK, well, um, the LED lights the LED lights are kind of a dime a dozen. Oh, the photo vest. That looks kind of cool and funky. Why not? And so uh, let me find, find this in here. And so uh, they said, great. If you buy it, we'll reimburse you, and you can review it. And I said, <laughs> no. Uh, no, you can just send me one. And so well, we can't, we're not set up to send it to you, but we can reimburse you. So I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's silly. And they said, fine, how about if we pay you first? Or maybe I said, pay me first, whatever. And they said, okay. And then the cost of this thing, which was $51.99 for all of the pieces combined, which, sorry, I got to, excuse me, I have to actually think while I type, com light rainproof photo vest. I know he added the link, but I don't even know where to go to find it. Here we go. This is roughly the page. I'm seeing a different price on here, so it's roughly this. This is not the exact page. The exact page is linked down below in the show notes, which I don't have access to from here. Um, but this is it. It is a rain-proof, apparently, photography vest. Very interesting indeed. And I thought, this thing looks crazy enough that it'd make for a fun show thing. So, uh, full disclosure on this, I've been asked to review this. I have essentially been given... It, it's been given to me because I bought it and they reimbursed me the other way around. Uh, don't know anything else about the company. Got no allegiances to them. If I think it's awesome, uh, you'll hear it. If I think it's bizarre and sucky, you're going to hear that too. So let's find out just how ridiculous this vest is because, you know, that's what we're all about here. Uh, we are going to also do this while looking at comments. Remember, by the way, if you're watching live, do at photo Joseph me on the comments so that I can see the comments coming up just like that. And if you really want to get my attention or you just love the show, you can hit that little super chat button down there. And by the way, if you're watching this right now, hit that thumbs up button for me. Hit it if you're watching live. Hit it if you're not watching it live. Those thumbs ups really do help, and I appreciate those thumbs up. So thank you. Um, if you have questions related to this, put them in the comments. We will address them as we go. If you have questions that are not related to this, hold off on those. We will come back after this part of the show for a part two of the show, which is the commentary. We can talk about whatever you'd like. Alrighty, so let's see what is going on in here. So far, we got, uh, we've got we got good mornings. We've got good mornings from Bangalore. Awesome, love that. And uh, we've got forecast for WWDC, which is, of course, totally expected. So we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll see if there's any questions that are related to this in a little bit. Let's get started. So it's three parts. You don't have to buy all three parts. Uh, I just said, give me the, the full-on kit. This one, the big one, says rainproof, multifunctional, camera carrying, vest, and holster. That's the big one. Curiously, that's the exact same description on this piece and this piece, which are clearly smaller pieces, not the full holsters. So this one says, but they all say the same thing. Built-in rainproof cover, vest, vest style camera holster, safety locking knob and safety belt design, fluorescent bar design for security alert at night, multifunction and flexible, made of high quality polyester fabrics, comfortable shoulder pad and modeling design. Let's get started, shall we? Gah. Built in a handy dandy waterproof, or shipped in a handy dandy waterproof Ziploc bag. And then in a very delicate and lovely, clearly non waterproof little nylon mesh bag. Cute pack. The box that this came in, even though it came from Amazon, it came in a completely handcrafted cardboard box that had been cut and retaped to make it as small as possible. Hey, kudos for recycling, right? All right. Oops, what's that? Something else in there. That is a camera plate. I don't have the close-up camera today. I'm sorry because it is out in the other room um, all rigged up. So I can't do close-ups. But this is a camera plate, a uh, quarter 20 socket thing with what looks like a little sleeve to drop in to your vest thing from the picture I saw. Um, it's, it's metal. Okay, that's good. We like metal. And it also has these little camera. I hate these things. Anyway, okay. Get that out of the way. So to, pr to really do this properly, I need a rainy day or a garden hose, neither of which 
I'm prepared for today. But I think what'll happen, especially because this thing is water resistant and I don't mind if it gets a little wet, I think what we'll do is it will see if it's gonna rain anytime soon. If it is, I'll just go stand out in the rain for your viewing pleasure. If not, then what frankly would probably be more to your viewing pleasure is I might have Ryan turn the garden hose on me. <laughs> that sounds like a really, really bad idea. Uh, all right, so you've got a vest. This thing is like a, it's like a, feels like it's got a Kevlar plate in there. Is this thing bulletproof too? My goodness, it's got a pocket in the back. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, that's where the rain cover is. Okay, so there's the rain cover part. Well, that's good. It's pocketed in the back, so that stays out of the way if you don't need it. Let's just tuck that in for now. And... It's got a, what is this for? It's got a, I have no idea what that's for, but it's got a cover there. What the heck is that for? There's no manual, so it's not like it tells me what it's for. All right, I'll see if I can figure that out at some point. It's got a mesh shoulder strap harness thing. Let's see, this is Velcroed. Is that, hmm. Not too sure about that. The shoulder strap is just Velcro, but let's be honest, that is some seriously strong Velcro. So not the easiest thing to adjust. It means you're gonna have to take it off to adjust it, but uh, we'll see how that works out. See, look, I already got it the wrong length. It doesn't match, um, but we'll see once I get it on. Is there additional adjustment here? No, there's not a digital additional adjustment here. So you really do have to set that Velcro over the strap thing. Um, these are, ooh, those are not good. Okay, that's not good. Okay, that one's holding. Take it out manually. Okay, that one is holding. Let's go back to this one, because this one was not holding. It's not good. You don't want these things falling apart. Let me give it a little, uh, a little spread on there. There we go. Put that back in. Okay, that's not good at all. So clearly, that's gonna fall off. Hmm. This appears to be a backup so that if it does fall off, it doesn't fall off of you. Maybe that just makes it easier to put on. I'm gonna assume that makes it easier to put on. Okay. Uh, yeah, so far that little clasp there isn't so, isn't so cool. So waist strap here that with tightening capability. So that's good. All right, so there's the release for that. So let's see how strong this thing is. Okay, that's good. That's good enough. And then there is a secondary Inside strap. For really, really skinny people? No. I don't know what that's for. If you want to put this strap on the, in no. I don't know, maybe it attaches to one of these accessories. Okay, uh, let's see here. On the back, what's on the back here? On the back, just a, okay, it's just a layer to keep the little flaps from flapping out. This is, I suppose, reflective. Let's see, I'm trying to shine that. It's kind of reflective, so there's the reflective thing. All right, let's see what happens. Let's put this guy on. Um, so I guess I can go, let's see, let's take that off. Let's put this on. <laughs> can we make a little microphone noise here? Sorry about that. And let's put this on. We may have to redo the microphone. Let me re rethink the microphone here, hold on. Put that a little higher, let's see if that helps. Okay, let's do this. It's kind of, no, man, that is not cool. That part we don't like, for sure. You cannot have that thing coming off on you. That would be bad. Okay, so now my, as I said, my shoulder straps are weirdly, because they're not the right length. <laughs> so this is all sideways on me. So that means I'm gonna have to adjust this and try and get that the same length by simply moving the Velcro strap. I, if you can't cinch it, that's a little weird. That's really kind of, you gotta work hard to get this thing to the right length. It is strong Velcro though. I, don't, I wouldn't worry about that falling off. Of course, that front clasp is gonna fall off long before this. All right, let's try this again. And put that on. Okay, we're gonna go for that. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna take this. Still not the same. Getting these things the same could be, this is too high. I don't like this, I gotta make it lower. Okay. Whew. Are we having fun yet? This, these straps need to be longer for sure. So I'm going to move these a little bit longer here. Tough Velcro. 
Let's see here. Let's try it about that length, and we're going to get the other one about the same. Whoops. Oops. I kind of just broke that. Sorry, guys. Um, all right, let's put that in there. They're about the same length. Okay, so that is now... I can tell a lot of you are going to be clicking on the affiliate link for this one, aren't you? Let's see here. Let's try this again. Put that on here. Is that... Still not the same. We're just gonna pretend it's the same length. I'm tired of adjusting that. And now let's take the waist strap part of this. Here it is. Attach this. All right. Let's, uh, oh, sorry, that was loud. That just peaked, didn't it? Let me take that down a little. All righty. Well, this is a problem, clearly. I can't very well have it so that, uh, where'd the, great, now I lost the attachment. where the, there it is. I can't very well have it so that when I put my camera on there, okay. All right, so this has, oh boy. All right, so this screws in the bottom, but there's no, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's got a direction and it needs to be that direction. And it doesn't have, like a regular tripod plate, it's two pieces, it's a collar, like you get it partially tight, you line it up, and then you screw the other part in. This doesn't have that, it's just one full-on thing in. So that's in there. Oh, okay, it spins, okay, so that can spin on there, so it doesn't matter if it's straight. But clearly, what the heck? Oh, okay, it's got a release. Sorry, I keep peeking the audio. got a release if you can figure out how that works. Lock, unlock, lock, unlock. Okay, honestly, I have no idea how to get my camera out of here now. How in the heck? That's, is that lock or unlock? Seriously? My camera's stuck in here now. I have no idea how this, wait, wait, nope, nope, that's not it. I wouldn't quite call this quick draw. Oh, there it goes, okay. Okay, so you have to get it at the right angle. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, here. So here, let's put this thing on again. And. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna win. I don't think this is one who's winning any awards. Sorry, folks, but this is not cutting it. That ain't good. Now, okay, let's just assume, let's just pretend that this part worked, okay? Let's, because this is clearly, you know, a fixable prob problem. Um, you could even get a new one of these, they could ship you out a replacement one, and that would work. So let's just assume, let's just pretend that this works, shall we? We're just gonna pretend that it works, so let's, uh, let's solve this the camera way. This is how photographers solve all their problems. Gaff tape. Okay, put that in there. And that, 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 that. All right. Okay, so that problem is solved now. All right, so now we got this in here. To release it, I have a little trigger that I then have to... Tr How the hell did I get that out before? I have to pull this thing. I don't know if you can see this. You really can't. It's like this tiny little trigger in here. And I'm trying to pull that just right there. Okay, so I have to... you got to know exactly where to put the camera. So you have to do... That, that's the angle, okay. So it's the angle of this thing has to go in just right. Okay. And then there's the rain part of it. Let's get the rain thing out. There we go. That's enormous. Okay, seriously, this is like if you're gonna protect a really you could put your baby under here, Jesus. Uh, it's got little cinch cords, okay, so we can cinch that up. Let's cinch that, ow! You can cinch this up. This company is never talking to me again. <laughs> you can cinch that up, there we go. And I guess at that point, right, so if I had a really long lens on here, okay, all right, that's cool, so if I had a long lens on there, that would go down and cover that. Okay, ouch, man, that hurt. All right, so now, Oh, for crying out loud, before we get to the rest of these, I have to look at the comments because this has been far too much fun. So I'm sure that there are some commentary coming by that is going to be colorful. 
Let's see what's happening in the comment. <laughs> I'm really hurt. Mm. Uh, all right, GH5 questions. Hold off on those until afterwards. Uh, Bart Johnson says, look like one of those old fit laser tag vests. Oh, there you go. Unless you can laser tag and shit it. Uh, SRO Digital says, did the supplier suggest the show could be a multi-part session? <laughs> LOL. No. No, I did. Uh, I guess water's the only thing it's proofed against. Standard handling will destroy it. I, we're we're going to give... Well, yeah, I've already broken two things on it, haven't I? Uh, aperture... Buscam saying photo docs with aperture control. I think that's an unrelated question. Bring that up later. Um, it's infinity focus. Looks like... I don't know what you guys are talking about. Looks like you're getting ready for the next installment of Fifty Shades of Grey. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not really something for the fashion conscious either. What? This isn't fashionable? Please. It's like um, SWAT chic. You know, come on. Looking badass up here. That is, in, no, nope, that's engineer style. Yeah, there you go. See, engineer style. Baby born. I'm telling you, man, you can put the kid in here. Of course, you might not want to hold your kid's life in the hands of a bit of gaff tape. Uh, loving the patience with the product. Well, what else are we going to do? This is what the show's all about. We're having fun. Chef Joseph. Uh, sure. Uh, people are really enjoying this. That's great. It looks like my barbecue apron, except mine has Han Solo on it. You got a barbecue apron with Han Solo? That's so cool. I love it. Posted a photo of you on your face. Zachary posted a photo of me on Facebook. Excellent. Make sure you tag footage of studios in that. That is so funny. All right. This is, the comments are pretty bad. This is awesome. All right. Let's see what else is in here. So this is part two, which, um, again, it has the exact same description on it, which it clearly is not. So let's just see what this is. It's a secondary plate. Wait, where'd it go? Oh, it's got another one of the camera socket things, which is why I brought multiple bodies out here. That's right, because I knew that that was coming. Um, so I got another one of these. And, oh, there was a tag on there. There was a tag on there. Does it say anything? No, it just has a model number. No, that's useless. Okay. So what, is, what, do, what do I do with this? Where do I attach that? All right, now I have to look at the, uh, let's go back to the web page and see if this, this explains what this other component is for. Let's see here. So there's the whole thing cover. Wait, let me go. This camera is not included. Really? Um, all right, this is not the right one. Let me find, give me just a moment here. I'm going to find the actual right link that I sent to, uh, to, to Ryan. Where's, uh, there are certain things that I can do, think while talking, and then I get to other things and my brain goes, it, we're not doing this while you're talking at the same time. That is clearly not going to happen. But here we go. I found it. Let's uh, make sure I it's muted. No, shush. Mute and find the link. And it is there we go. Now we got the right one. Okay, back to it. So this is the link that is down below. So what I've got is that thing plus the, oh, I see. Whoa. Oh, that, oh Jesus. <laughs> All right. That goes on the side, apparently. Oops, where'd that go? Come back here. That goes on the side. This is gonna look bad. I mean, I'm gonna look so cool. Well, maybe that's what that other kind of clip was for. No. Okay, let's just try this anyway. That's a serious Velcro wrap pack thing in there, I'll tell you that much. Why in the world Seriously, why would you have this oops, wrong mouse, this strap attached to your camera? Why would you do that? Oh, okay. Oh, so if you drop it or so okay, so this one doesn't get a strap. Well, I guess you could use this strap on it. This one, okay, now I get it. All right, it's all coming together now. So we're gonna attach this thing here. This is, this is badass right here. That's what this is. All right, so that's on there. Give me another camera. Let's, 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 do, a, let's do something big. Let's put a big lens on here. Let's make this tough. And take this other plate. Screw this guy in. All right. And in. 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 Stay in. Nope. That one's not locking. I can't figure out if it's supposed to lock or not. Oh well, that's okay. We're just going to uh, continue on here. Let's get the 
other rain pouch out. We've got one more piece to add to this, let us not forget. Oh, this is not yet done. Do not tune out yet. This is just starting to get good. All right, here we go. I'm going to uh, end up ripping my headphones out of the out of my head here. Uh, that's interesting. It's okay. You tell me which side should be outside, the shiny or the matte. I would think the shiny, but it's backwards for that. As is this one. Wouldn't you think that the shiny side would be the outside, but then that's twisted over. So either this is put together backwards, or I'm just misunderstanding what waterproof is. Okay, all right, we're just gonna do it that way. My God, this thing is huge. Um, let's uh, try not to snap my fingers off again. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, all right, well, that's kind of sort of covered. All right, guys. Now to shoot, I could get to this I suppose once you figure this out, you could get this out quickly. There we go. Okay, so that's ready to go. And I think locked in, cover that with rain, okay? And this one is, okay, now that one's locked in. It finally locked itself. It's kind of like a spontaneous, I'll lock when I want to. It's my vest I can lock if I want to. Okay, I cannot get this one out. Ah, there we go. Whew. So I got my second camera there. I couldn't take this fancy, camera strap here and see now I've already pulled off these which I guess is why they had gave you these so you can attach that on so I could attach that to this and then I'd have this so if I dropped it you know it only go to there all right fair enough Whew. all right we're getting somewhere all right now let's see what's in here <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure this company's definitely never talking to me again. It's just a big belt with extra loops on it. All right, let's see what this is supposed to be. Let us see what this is supposed to be. Um, the belt. This is the extra belt. I have no idea what that's for. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what that's for. So... I guess if you really wanted to get, you have dual belts, do you, re oh, right, remember I said there was a whole extra belt system in here. I didn't know what it was for. I still don't know what it's for because this would have, let's see, if I put this onto here now, wait, does that go in here? Okay, seriously, guys, it doesn't even fit. Uh. Lord. Ah. Well, I don't think that's supposed to go there. I mean, I would think it is supposed to go there, but I can't get that in. Let's try the other one. Let's see if this end goes in here. See, that one fits. Yeah. I, I, I. Let's see what's going on in the comments, shall we? <laughs> oh my goodness, scrolling up, looking for the beginning of the comments that I missed last time. Uh, I hope you tagged me in that photo there, uh, Zachary, I can't wait to see that. Samuel says, well, finally caught a live show. <laughs> you picked a doozy to tune into, my friend. Just got my GH5 yesterday. You've been my main source of information. Why, that is wonderful to hear. Thank you. I hope you've checked out my GH5training.com. Just in case you haven't, just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, just in case I can find out where things are in here, you can, do not forget, you can run, not walk, but run and pre-order the GH5 training from gh5training.com. This is massively in production right now. It's looking kind of awesome. And uh, I put up a couple of sample videos that are up on that website right there. So do check it out. Do pre-order because as soon as this is done, the pre-order price will go away and you will no longer be able to save 40%. It's pretty good savings. Okay, um, SRO Digital. Perhaps the additional plastic bags hold the spares to the bits of product that have failed the Joseph test. Jess says, would you really ever wear something like this? I've never seen anyone with something like that in public. What are you saying? I don't look cool? What are you saying? I look cool. Um, no. No, I'm afraid not. I, I, photo vests are clearly great, right? If you've got to, it's a great way to carry a bunch of gear around. If you have 
you know, multiple lenses and, and all that stuff, and you want to have it on your body, not in a bag, the vests are great. Vests have been around forever and ever. I think a photography vest is a very good thing. This is a massive contraption that holds nothing more. Let's just pretend it worked completely, right? Flawless design functionality, nothing ripped off the back. This clip actually held without having to put tape on it. Let's pretend that this part, I could actually get to the camera quickly. Um, all I'm doing here is taking the weight of the camera off of a single strap and putting it onto two straps, distributing it evenly. But then this is now pulling me sideways, so I'd have to have two of these over here to really distribute the weight evenly. I would prefer to just use something like a, a Black Rapid strap where the weight is distributed nicely over a large strap on my shoulder if I had a you know, really big heavy camera and it slides up and down seamlessly. This is not convenient. It's also hot. This huge plate on here is just a big plate of massive heat sink that is not going to be comfortable on anything more than a freezing cold day. Um, if you were wearing a big winter coat, and I've done this before, where you're wearing a big coat and having a camera on a strap is kind of cumbersome, right? Because it's it gets caught on things, you got scarves and hats and all that. Then I could see where having a way to attach the camera to your front like this would be very useful. But let's not forget that Peak Design creates what is essentially the clip, the, the camera post and a little clip, which you can attach to anything. So if you're already wearing a backpack, you can attach it here. If you really wanted to put on some kind of thing and attach it to your chest, I'm sure you could. But I'm not really seeing the benefit of that. Now the waterproof, obviously waterproof is good. If you're shooting in inclement weather or you know, shooting at the water slide park or something, you might want to have that. But, um, I mean, a pro camera is all, pretty much all pro cameras are water, water resistant to some degree, right? So, you can't take pictures when it's under here, obviously, so it's not like it's a full-on rain bag. I'm not so sure I see really the benefit of having something like this. I gotta be honest there. Uh, would I wear it? No. All right. Let's see here. Jurgen Jurgen says, you look like Tony Stark. I so do not look like Tony Stark. Tony Stark was cool. But I'll take it. Um, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Yes. Jurgen says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I lost the comments here. Uh, Jurgen says, the rain cover gives you the right rubbish bin look. Right? It is the rubbish bin look. It's like me in a trash bag out for a night. Ready to go fly fishing while taking pictures. Hey, you go see if you're a fishing person. Maybe that's helpful there. SRO Digital says, I hope there's a pouch for energy drink you're going to need after you finish fitting the product. There is, that's, this is one of my problems here. There's no, I can't attach anything else to it, right? I don't have a place for memory cards. There's no, okay, there's these little things. I don't know what the heck those are for. Yeah, there's no, there's nowhere for memory cards. There's nowhere to attach to hang my phone. There's no other, there's, and I still don't know what this thing is. Let me get my camera out of here. I still don't know what, there we go, what this is for. No clue. No clue what that is for. Uh, technology says, rather open the camera bag and keep the cameras in that in case of rain or run to shelter than fiddling around with this or maybe even drop the camera in the worst of the case. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Marvin says, I'm in, McDon in McDonald's in Liverpool, docks with earplugs and howling with laughter. Nearly as funny as photo Joseph, but not quite. Uh, which part is nearly as funny as me? I don't know. That's okay. I'll take it as a compliment. That's, if, you're, if you're not laughing at me, you're laughing with me. Strike that. Reverse it. Uh, Jürgen says, wonder how long it's going to take you to get out of that contraption, right? The O Show, this is gold. Why, thank you. I'm going to go viral. Yeah, as if. Please post the comments in the Amazon review. Oh, I will. Um, Buy Nothing Ashland. <laughs> Buy Nothing Ashland is a local Facebook group where you can give things away. Um, no, that's okay. Thanks. All right, guys. That was highly entertaining. Let's, 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 all right. You guys want to see me get out of the thing, don't you? All right, let's get out. Oh, look, that came off far too easily. Oh, I already untouched, undid this. See, that wasn't hard to get out of. How you doing? Let's wrap this thing up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this entertaining show. It was, it, it, it certainly was. Uh, if you want to stick around for the comments here, we'll be back momentarily. If you're not watching this live, then of course, just uh, click on the link that'll come up at the end of this and go on to the commentary part of the show. With that said, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.
gentlemen, once again, welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This is the commentary part of the show. If you missed the show, then that you you missed something good. This is a good show. That was that was a lot of fun. Ryan, you get a mess to clean up in here. Sorry. Um, howdy, everybody. Let's take a look at the comments. What has been flying by that was not related to the topic at hand, which was this insane photo vest of sorts. Uh, but that was fun. That was that was definitely entertaining. Ah, let's see what's been happening here. There were there were some comments. If you posted a comment earlier in the show and it was not related, repost it. So I don't have to scroll back to the very beginning of this, please. And let's see what we've got going on here. <laughs> John Morby, that's terrible. John says, return it on Amazon and keep the cash. That's, that's, that's terrible. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Although I don't know what I'm going to do with it because it's kind of weird. Um, Sean Mark Nipper says, I'm going to roll with the video, road video in my Pro. Okay, so Sean was texting me the other day asking about, he's allowed to text me because he's my friend. Uh, if, uh, how about how to get the mic set up with the iPhone? He was having some troubles with the configuration. So you got the video mic Pro. So I'm assuming then you've got the TRS to TRRS adapter and then into the lightning adapter because he's going into his iPhone. Um, at least that was the discussion. So that's what I'm assuming you're, you're doing. So cool. So you're going to be shooting. Sean is shooting. Uh, he's going to be blog, vlogging from the video show down in L.A. That's awesome. He's down there already. We can't wait to see your content. Sean, you can come on here and tell us all about it when you've got it ready to go and uh, we can get people to watch it. That's cool. Bart says, one of the updates listed for the summer GH5 firmware is high resolution anamorphic. Can you explain this? Currently, we can shoot 4K anamorphic. Will it go higher? Yeah, so as it's, I think it's using, I, I don't really understand it completely, but I think the idea is that you're getting the full 6K photo mode resolution but out to anamorphic. And it's not 6K anamorphic, so you can't call it that. It'd be like, I don't know, like 4.5K or 5K or something like that, but they're not calling it that because that just opens up a whole other can of worms. So um, it is, go away, it is higher resolution than 4K, utilizing, as I understand it, the 6K photo mode. That's about all I've got at this point. Um, sorry, I don't have more info on that. But once it comes out, then obviously we'll have all kinds of good info on it. I think it's, I gotta do some anamorphic stuff. And by the way, I haven't forgotten, obviously I've got that Ninja device in there. I am working with a little bit. I've been you know, distracted by all these other things, but I do need to spend some more time learning that, learning Vlog, and then I can do education on all that, which is uh, which is gonna be fun. Um, D -Tech Logic says, for the tr for trip to Orlando with the family, what lens should I take with the GH5? 12 to 35, 35 to 100, 25 to 14, or 12 to 60? If you're gonna take one lens, take the 12 to 60. Right, that's going to be your most versatile, especially since you're shooting family stuff. You might want to get some tight shots, some wide shots. The 12 to 60 is going to be your most versatile lens of that. Plus, you're not trying to shoot a, a feature film. You're not looking for that cinematic look necessarily. So you don't need to have super, super shallow depth of field. And you're not going to really follow focus rigs and all that. If you just want to keep it easy, 12 to 60, that's going to give you your widest range. It's fast enough for the kind of stuff you're going to be doing, shooting the family. Um, and you don't have to worry about changing lenses. So, yeah, easy answer for that one. Take that 12 to 60. That'll be your universal lens to carry with you. Um, let's see here. That's There was a question earlier about Metabone stuff. Repost that one if you want it, although I told you I didn't really know the answer to it, so you're going to have to post it in the comments. But maybe I saw some discussion about that, so maybe that got addressed already. Um, anything else? That was easy. That was fast. There's like nothing else in here. Let me just scroll back through the, to the beginning here and just see what, what might have happened. Was that fun with the vest? Oh, there's somebody asked earlier, Adrian asked, any tips for capturing a thunderstorm? Um, stay dry. <laughs> Not with this vest. Um, any tips for capturing a thunderstorm? A lightning? Like, tripod is a good idea. Well, not a metal one if there's a lightning storm. Watch out for that lightning. Um, stay dry, obviously. If you have to change lenses, be very aware. If you're talking, about, if you're in a thunderstorm where it's like a hot and humid kind of a night, and then you're going to step into an air conditioning room, keep in mind that your lenses will fog up like that as you go as you make that transition. So be very aware of that. So what you don't want to do is be outside in the hot, humid, uh, you know, I didn't say where you are, but I'm going to assume a hot, humid thunderstorm kind of a thing because it's getting into that season. If you then step into an air conditioning building and take your lens off to switch lenses, you're going to get a fog up on the back of the lens and on the sensor. So don't do that. If you have to change lenses, try to avoid it. If you have to, stay in that same environment. Just don't be in the rain, obviously. Get out of the rain, change lenses there, do it as quickly as you can. Or just don't change lenses. That's always a, a better, safer way to do things, of course. Uh, yeah, tripod, if you want to do those long exposures, that's fairly obvious. If you're trying to do a lightning type thing, you want to capture lightning, you can, you can do long exposures, right, to capture lightning. But if you are 
if it's a windy storm, then any kind of long exposure, if you're trying to shoot the clouds as well and the clouds are moving, you're gonna get these big kind of blurry clouds. You're not gonna get good cloud formation. If trees are in the shot and they're moving, obviously there's just gonna be a big blur. So you could think of things like there's there are lightning triggers. And I know you didn't say lightning, but I'm just rolling with that. There are lightning triggers that you can buy that will trigger your phone. And even I think through iPhone apps, I'm not sure how the heck this stuff works, but you can basically trigger your phone based off of a lightning strike, kind of crazy cool. You can do a bunch of exposures in a row. You can shoot 6K photo mode, right? And then just roll for a couple of minutes and pull out those couple of frames, shoot like a couple of minute clips at a time and then pull out the frame where the lightning strikes. That actually might be the best way to do it, come to think of it. 6K photo mode, capturing lightning, I like it. I might have to try that. We don't get very many lightning storms around here. We did have a couple earlier this season, um, which is really surprising around here. Um, but I do like that idea, actually, now that I've said that. I think it might be a good, good use for that. Try it. If you get to try it, let me know. Um, what else can I tell you? I don't know. What else, you guys? You, you guys help out here. I don't shoot a lot of thunderstorms. It's not really my thing. We don't get a lot of thunderstorms, so, you know, there you go. Um, but that's kind of what I've got for you right now. You can... Remember, you can layer photos, right? You could, unless you're being a purist about it, but you could shoot multiple photos. Let's say you shoot in 6K photo or whatever. You get a few photos with lightning strikes, but it's like there's a little one there, a little one there. Layer them in Photoshop, build that up, make like that super epic, big old lightning blast thing. Those super epic, crazy storm photos that you see on Facebook are never, that's not one shot. That's, you know, these are usually composites, lots of work done to the clouds, pull out some structure out of the clouds, make them look even more menacing. Um, a, lot of, a lot of that work can be done in post. You can pull colors out of, I wonder if I could find this picture actually. You can really pull colors out of the sky that were there because you're just en enhancing them but may not have been super dramatic. Um, let me see, I did a shot, oops, wrong one. I did a shot a while ago of, of a thunderstorm that we had here, one of the few good thunderstorms that we had, this is years ago. And I was just driving home from somewhere and it was total luck, um, had a good camera with me, had the tripod with me. I might've been coming back from a shoot. And uh, this crazy th thunderstorm rolled in and I am going to search my site for it. I don't know if I ever posted it on my website. I'm really bad at that. Um, th no, lightning, let's go, oops. Let's try searching for lightning, lightning. Fingers crossed, lightning storm over Ashland, sweet. All right, here comes the photo. There's that strike, but here's the one that I really liked, this one. Oh, look, it's on 500px, go figure. Um, so this purple coloring existed, but it was, I really pulled it out. Like I really, I sucked those colors right out of there. Uh, you can see the weird cloud movement. So this was multiple exposures as the cloud was moving, but it, it worked for this. I kind of like the way it did. And I got this really cool spacey thunderstorm thing here, but these lightning blasts are multiple strikes. I don't remember how many photos this was layered. This is a long time ago, but this is multiple strikes together. If we look back at the main page, there was another one that is probably also a multiple composite, but not many, maybe two for that if hey sean this is actually i took this picture really near your house um so that was really cool it's before i knew you uh yeah so that's cool so there's something to consider multiple up, uh, layer up those files it could, that can be a really cool way to do it all right enough on that let's see here uh samuel says in your opinion do you have a good focal length recommendation for a prime lens for the gh5 see this question comes up all the time on what is a, a good lens or an ideal lens there's no easy answer because it just depends on how you like to shoot and of course the subject that you're shooting right if you're even if you're a street photographer let's say i'm a street photographer i do street photography well you'll you can have an army of street photographers that say 30 mil and we're talking full frame equivalent so 30 mil that'd be a 15 mil on on the micro four thirds 30 mil equivalent that's that's where you got to be 30 to 35 like that is the focal length to be at then you have people say, that's too tight. You got to go 24, 24, man. That's where you got to be. And then you have people going, you're insane. 50, man. You got to go 50. That's where you're at. So there's no, there's no hard, fast rule. It's just what you prefer. How close do you like getting to your subject? How much more of the subject do you want, uh, of the surroundings of the subject do you want in your scene? Talking street photography, of course. It just depends. Personally, my favorite lens for street photography is not here, but it is the 15 millimeter F17 Leica. Prime lens, 30 mil equivalent, quite a wide field of view, uh, but I also like to get up and close to things, and I just, I love that lens, love that lens. Beautiful, beautiful lens. It's small as well. It sticks out about this far. I would probably put it on a GX85. I wouldn't put it on the GH5. If it was going out trying to do street photo. It's got the flip up bottom up LCD and go like, like that. Um, so there's that. But if that doesn't fit into your type of photography, then that's completely useless information to you. If you really have absolutely no idea what kind of lens to buy, 
then go for the 25 millimeter. The 25 would be the 50 mil equivalent. This is basically what you see through your eye. If you were to, if you put up the camera, right, and you have the 50 mil lens on, you open both eyes, everything is gonna line up. You have things that are the same size the way you see things. That is probably your most versatile, best way to learn lens. And even if you don't spend the money on the Leica one, if you buy the cheaper one, it's not that much slower. It's still a very good lens, it's dirt cheap. And then you'll have a focal length that is just a, everybody's gotta have it. There's a name for this, it's called the Nifty 50. Of course, you're buying a 25 mil, but the Nifty 50 for the 50 mil equivalent is your standard, gotta have it, basic lens. It's a great, great learning lens. So if you really don't know what focal length to go with, start with that and then expand from there. And as you decide, I want wider, I want tighter, then you can buy your next lens based off of that. Hopefully that's inf interesting and useful information. Matt, scrolling, scrolling. Matt says, GH5, needing to fill a focal gap from 40 to 100, 28 or less. I was considering the Olympus 40 to 150, 28, but I'm considering Metabones Canon EF like Sigma 50 to 100. Thoughts help. Okay, so you're gonna get better performance, autofocus performance off of a native lens. So there's that. So if autofocus is important to you, then I wouldn't go the Metabones solution. Um, I know you can still get some autofocus on Metabones, but it's not gonna be as fast. So if autofocus is not a concern and you already own Canon glass and you just want something really fast, then the Metabones is probably a good way to go. If you're buying everything, you're saying the Metabones Canon and the 60 to 50 to one, Sigma 50 to 100, um, I'm assuming that's an F2.8 lens. I'm not familiar with that lens. That would be a 200 to 400 equivalent. Uh, 100, sorry, 100 to 200 equivalent, sorry, brain fart there. Um, so it's a little bit longer than the gap. You said you're looking for a 40 to 100 gap. And maybe you're talking about not full frame equivalent. Okay, so let's just assume, assume the numbers match up. So I would say the biggest drawback of that would be your autofocus performance. Um, weight, size and weight as well. You know, this is gonna be a bigger, heavier contraption. Or the 35 to 100 f2.8. What's wrong with the 35 to 100 f2.8 from Lumix, right? That's a fantastic lens, especially the Mark II, got the better image stabilization. That's a beautiful lens, so I don't know why you wouldn't just go with that. So that would be that would be my first recommendation, Matt, is just to go with the Lumix lens. It's native, you're gonna get the best autofocus performance, you're gonna get the best image stabilization performance, uh, and it's the exact focal length that you want. It's actually just ever so slightly wider. So that's that's what I would go with. Uh, R.John Creation says, I have a pre-order in. Do you have a copy of the 8 to 18 on the way? I don't yet. Um, I, I certainly will. Panasonic, Panasonic has promised that I will get one at some point. I don't even know if I'll get to keep it. There's a very limited number of them coming for some strange reason. I guess somebody in the ordering power structure didn't think that it was going to be that widely wanted or power, uh, desired of a lens, which I completely disagree with. I really want that lens, um, which I don't even really know what I'm going to do with it because uh, I wouldn't use it for vlogging because it's too wide. I like to have a little bit of, but anyway, um, but I will absolutely, I'll, when I get, I do want to get one, I do want to do uh, do some reviews on it. So when I get one, I will, but I do not know when I will get one. You might have yours before me if you've got a pre-order in. Burns Tech says, if I get struck by lightning now, I'm gonna blame you, ha, <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm gonna try it, try, be out trying this the next time. I'm talking about the photo layering there. Cool, don't get struck by lightning. Airbus Cam says, just for info and a bit of luck. Um, okay, so, just a little help for me when you're commenting on questions. If you are asking questions spread out over a long period of time in parts, and especially if you're not tagging me and then going, oh, look at the question I asked you, don't do that. Reform the question to one thing that I can see. See, if I'm looking at a question here like this, I have no idea what you're, what you're referring to, and I don't want to spend five minutes scrolling back trying to find it because that's really boring for everybody else. So reform your question into one place, like this one right here, which is from the same person, which maybe this is the same question, and I will be able to answer it. Bit of interest playing around, um, I did my new GH, sorry. Bit of interesting playing around, I did my new GH5, I bought an A mount to four thirds adapter. Okay, while my Sony A mount lenses worked, the 70, 70, 40, 40, 70, I guess, G lens, I'm not sure what that means. 1635 Zeiss, 2470 Sigma, HSM, and Sony 18 to 200. So it sounds like you got a lot of glass that's working with uh, the adapter, super. Yeah, it's that's one of the cool things about Micro Four Thirds, you can adapt just about anything to it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, Samuel, follow-up question here, or follow-up on that lens suggestion, says the prime lens would mainly be for portrait pictures, um, the the kind of again full frame equivalent eighty to one hundred range is a is ideal portrait. So generally considered, again it depends on your shooting style, but that's generally considered an ideal portrait length. So that puts the forty two 
0.5 millimeter lens right in that window. That is a portrait lens. You've got the Noctocron, which is a $1,800 lens, I think. It's pretty spendy, but that is like the lens. That thing is insanely gorgeous. If that is out of your budget, there is a 42.15 F1.7, I think. Obviously not as shallow depth of field, not as fast. It's not a Leica lens. It's not as sharp and clean and overall as glorious, but it's a great focal length and the thing is tiny. It's like a, it's a tiny little lens. So that's a very, very good option. If you think the focal length might be good, but you don't know if you want to spend the money on the big lens, you can either rent the big lens and try it out or buy the smaller one, decide that you like the focal length, but you really want the shallower depth of field, you want the better low light performance, sell it and buy the Noctocron. That would be my advice. All righty. Ah, <sighs> that was a lot that suddenly came in. Okay, that's it. Guys, that was fun. I love these sessions. This is a good time. It's Friday, it's almost 1030. And I got a lot of work to do today. So um, thanks again, as always for watching. Hey, you know the routine. Thumbs up if you're watching right now. Hit that thumbs up button. We like that. We like the thumbs up. You can always do this too. But you know, it's, you got to give me like a reason for that. It's not cool to just thumbs down and, and walk away. It's kind of like dropping a pile of poop on somebody's doorstep and walking away. Don't do that. You got to tell them why you left it there. And <laughs> no idea where that just came from. Uh, what else do I want to tell you about today? Let's see here. Um, this is an older one, but I am in the middle of doing this Affinity Photo series over at photoapps.expert. If you're interested at all in Affinity Photo, do check that out. You just head to photoapps.expert. You'll see them there. If you go to photoapps.expert slash live, you'll see what the next session is and what it's going to be. It is on filters, I think, the live filters. I'm pretty sure that's what the next one is, live filters. There, Affinity Photo is crazy impressive. I'm really, really enjoying it. And uh, like I said, I, like I've said before, I'm using it now instead of Photoshop. Everywhere that I can, I have not yet had to go back to Photoshop or anything. Granted, my needs aren't like crazy, crazy heavy, but it's been a really good app. I'm really enjoying it. I just did something today with masking and filtering and I'm going, ooh, am I gonna be able to do this? And I could, so um, so that's cool. So yeah, check that out. Head over there and, and do check that out. It's a fun session. Uh, let's see here. All right, Airbus has put the put the uh, rest of his question in. I, uh, he says, sorry about that. Spread the 200 word count limit got me. Oh, and the lens is, now I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 70 to 400 gram G master. Okay, that's what you're talking about. Cool. Bird sex says, I won't get struck by lightning. Good. I didn't even think to use 6K photo mode for lightning. See, I just thought of that just now. It's a good idea. I've tried shooting it in the past with utter failure. No pro gear, just plain Jane. Yeah, if you're trying to time it by pushing the button, it ain't never going to happen, right? Because, you know, speed of light and all that. By the time you see it, you have to react to push the button. By the time that happens, it's gone. So, ain't going to happen. Um, and John Warby says, it's Poets Day. Well, maybe I was a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> oh, boy. Clearly, time for me to go. Thanks so much for hanging around, guys. It was fun to have you here for the Q&A. It was super fun to have you here for the commentary on my vest thing. If you haven't seen that yet, stick around. The link to that will be up in just a moment. Take care of yourselves, guys. We'll see you next week for the WWDC live blogging, which I'm sure is going to get shut down, but it's going to be fun while I do it. Well, it lasts. Take care. Bye-bye.